Good morning, everybody. I hope you are well. Today, I would like to uh, show you the propagation of one of the beautiful euphorbia known as Euphorbia flanagani. This succulent is uh, indigenous to South Africa, Cape, Cape uh, Province. It is fairly very strong succulent and very easy to grow, to propagate, and it has a use of landscaping purpose and also pottery. Generally, it grows uh, three different formation throughout the life of the plant that the other two shape known as cresting which on the top right corner I show you the video number that you look at that particular uh, video regarding the form of uh, crested one. But today, my purpose is propagation of the pieces known as a cutting, which is right here. Generally, these pieces grows around the plant throughout the years that you technically pull them out like this and propagate them like this. This particular plant, during the process, you may observe some sort of sap, white sap, which is uh, pretty much uh, uh, dangerous if it touches your body or your eyes. So you have to be very careful. You have to have a gloves and also goggles or glasses at that doesn't uh, uh, accidentally be in touch with this uh, poisonous sap. However, generally when you are working in the garden, it's always good to wear gloves, no matter with what kind of the plant you're working with. This succulent Euphorbia flanagadi, which is a compact, it grows so many different formations. Uh, as I have said, the round one and the crested one, which you see again right here on the right corner of the page. And also another type of the crested, which is look like an elephant ear. However, this plant has a very gorgeous, tiny little bit of the Florence type uh, flower that is a five petal and uh, some variety of it has a very nice aroma. Today I am going to do the propagation on these pieces, babies, and throughout the propagation I'm going to show you a few form of this way of propagation. When you are going to work with this plants or any other plant, make sure that your pot does have a hole on the bottom. Today I'm going to use the terracotta pot and the purpose is to create a nice shape round terracotta. But you can always use the square ones tall ones, round ones, any way you want to use. Generally, when you place the soil in the pot, make sure your soil is very airy, has a combination of uh, perlite and peat moss and a touch of pearl, uh, fertilizer, which generally I use 
fertilizer known as 14, 14, 14. One tablespoon per four gallon of soil. When you are filling up the soil, you make a hole on the bottom, on the top of the soil, in the center, and you tap it. So you make sure that you do use the root hormone and place the plant right in the middle. Make sure that most of the body of the plant, it is in the soil. That way the plant grows round and beautiful. That's the way it is. I want to make another one. Tap it. Make a hole. And use the root hormone. And put it in the soil and stabilize it with the soil around it. This is the way you propagate it. Here we will put a little bit more soil. This plant is so strong that if you leave it throughout the winter outside in the rain, it still can handle it. It's not going to give you any trouble. However, if the time of the plant in the pot goes behind the time that you have to repot it, the shape of the plant becomes like this. It will rise. Which is generally this way you use it for a purpose of certain ceramic cylinder round or a square pots. As you see, it's growing very beautiful and also is blooming. But if you are properly repotted, you see the codex will expose. As you know, this is a codexiform plant and these spots are the spots of the leaves that was dried and you pull it out and with a little bit nice toothbrush washing the codex to create a very beautiful gorgeous shape out of it. Uh, the color throughout the summer will become more darker on the edges like a diamond and become very pretty and exotic looking. So I have placed almost uh, one tray. I'm going to do the last one. So then the whole tray is ready to sit for a while, technically perhaps a couple of years or so, to become very beautiful and uh, nice codex, which I'm going to show you right now how they will become. Now, as you see, we have completed our uh, uh, Cutting our cuts, cutting pieces. They are ready to go and sit somewhere uh, warm. During this process for three weeks, you do not water it and nor you let the rain go on it. And you don't want to leave it in a very cold environment. Technically, a greenhouse would be very good. And uh, so, I'm going to go and place this one in this greenhouse with the air. 
a nice uh, cover. Now in this segment of this video, I would like to show you a few of my Palalagadis that they growing very healthy. They are in a several different size of pots, four inches, seven inches, nine inches, and also 12 inches and uh, ceramic pot. So the main concept of showing this segment is, as I have mentioned throughout the video, that this plant has the potential of changing to become crested. I'm going to show you some of the pieces that have been turned to be crested and also I'd like to show you the type of the cresting that they have. Here in this particular one, as you see, this is the elephant ear, which is a portion of the plant turns to be this kind of the cresting, which is a flat, like an ear. They are very nice, very firm and a swan. Here in this particular one, this portion of the plant has turned to become the elephant ear and another portion has become crested differently, which is very interesting and very rare. Here in this particular one, I like to show you in the middle of the growth of some of these plants there is this portion has become crested as you see right there and here in this particular one this portion has become crested elephant ear which in the future is going to be massive however this is a very interesting plant and Sometimes you may see that it's all uh, same Flanagani, but it is not. There are so many different varieties of the Flanagani that some known as a Medusa, some is different. Here you see the Eskidi leaves, and here you see actually Eskidi branches. And here is more thicker. Here the plant has grown uprising shape. And here you see the plant has grown more flat. So when we learn more about Flanagani or Euphorbia family, we get more into the details that why this is happening. However, less go and see the final portion of our video also this one that you see is already uh, been repotted a couple of years ago will continue their journey to grow to these sizes if you want them to grow uh, on a massive number or if you want to grow individually. However, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a, a sort of video that gives you a kind of ideas how to work with the Euphorbia family because of the sap on the plant and also how to propagate the pups. If you like this video, please uh, like my uh, channel and uh, subscribe to my uh, channel and comment for me if you do have any question about propagation or any other uh, question regarding my plants. Meantime, I have to thank you very much for uh, leaving me, leave me the comment and also uh, uh, following my channel and watching my channel. Again, thank you so much. Don't forget to share my video with others. I appreciate it very much and have a nice day.